Well, good morning. It's about uh, five minutes after five o'clock a.m. here, early morning, and um, I want to talk about this controversy that's come out with this uh, supposed uh, country song. More on that in a minute. Uh, this uh, Jason Aldean guy with the uh, um, try that in a small town, and everybody and their brothers making videos about it and reviewing it and whatever else. It's about divide and conquer. That's what the whole thing is about. And um, it's not all just some kind of fake thing and whatever else. Uh, this nation is very divided. And this nation is heading for civil war. I mean, the civil war is actually, technically, it's already started. But it's just going to get worse and worse. Um, but uh, country. <laughs> I don't call that music country music. Um, country music is bluegrass it's um what country people play i mean that would seem fairly logical that if you have country music it should come from people that live in the country and you know you look at some of the older uh, country singers and things i mean bill monroe and and uh, the osborne brothers and some of these guys that actually were raised out in the country and uh they didn't have drums in their um in their music you start to incorporate drums and electric guitars and everything else, uh, you're kind of straying away from what country music is. If you see me doing this, smashing things and whatever, it's mosquitoes. Um, we get a lot of those in northern Maine. But, uh, you know, I, I see this thing with this modern commercial country, and you get these guys and they have earrings and they have tattoos and they're wearing all black and things, and... And uh, it's just rock music with a steel guitar or something, and they call it country. Uh, that's not country music. Country music should be something that is um, singing, sung by country people about wholesome country values. And um, but you know, I, I looked into this song thing, and and um, and it's basically just echoing what a lot of people are feeling. They're people are getting sick and tired of this all the violence and all the just ridiculous nonsense and watching police stand down as cities are burned and um, we're told that people have a right to protest well they have a right to protest but they don't have a right to burn things down and attack people and whatever else and um, all of us can see the hypocrisy if you're awake to anything you can see the hypocrisy of you know uh, there's rules for some people that don't apply to others and, and rules for others that don't apply to the other people. It's insanity. And what's happening is this nation is being purposefully divided. Like I said, the police are told to stand down on a lot of different issues. And you think, well, uh, I don't understand this. Why are, you know, why are there rules that don't apply here to certain people? And certain groups you know and and you have um, this nation is perfectly fine with black racism and um, you know it's okay to say we want uh, black only schools and black only this and black only that but if you do that as a white person well then you're a racist it's hypocrisy it doesn't make any sense and um, it just has gotten old and there's a lot of people that are very fed up with it and it's not because those people are racists. Um, I mean, certainly there are white racists out there. People that think that the white race is superior and want to eliminate others. They're, they're there, sure. But most white people are just saying, hey, you know, we don't want the hypocrisy of, you know, we're not allowed to, if we say anything about, you know, our particular ethnicity or whatever, then we're a racist. You know, I'm a German, so that makes me a Nazi or something automatically. It, we're tired of the hypocrisy. And, you know, as a Christian, uh, you know, you have to step back and look at all this stuff and realize what it is. That's certainly there, but we do have to live in this world. And we do have to keep our children safe. And, and uh, I mean, I've, I've gone places and, and um, just minding my own business. And I've had... Uh, young black thugs just glare at me you know for no reason I mean I'm I'm a big guy you know and um, so I guess I, I'm threatening them or something by being big or something you know and 
so I get glared at. And I just think, why? So, I mean, and I had a friend in, in uh, high school, went out to Lancaster City when I used to, I lived in Pennsylvania for most of my life, but uh, went out to Lancaster City, and when he was out there, um, he, he was jumped by a bunch of uh, black youths, and they just about beat him to death. They didn't even want his money or anything else. They just wanted to beat up a white boy. Um, but that's, you know, well, they, you just make excuses for that. Well, they're just, uh, uh, expressing themselves or something. But if a bunch of white teens goes out and beats up a black teenager, well, then that's racist and a hate crime and whatever. And I'm talking in the 1990s, you know, uh, my brother-in-law married to my youngest sister. Same thing happened to him. Uh, he was out, uh, he was a hot rod guy he had a late sixties Camaro, Chevy Camaro and he was out in Lancaster City with some of his buddies just hanging out. And um, a bunch of black teens came up and, and beat them up. Why? Oh, well, just because they're white. That's all. So, you know, there's some of us out here that, that uh, I mean, have been victims of black racism. And, you know, again, that's how this whole thing all meshes together. See? There are real crimes. There are real things that are bad and I'm sure that there's been black people that have been victimized by white race racism so that's why the Bible says stay separate okay um, come together to trade come together for learning about one another's culture and respect one another's culture but um, biblical separation God set bounds of their habitation so that they would seek after the Lord the Bible talks about that but uh, you mix everything together and you force people to be together and and uh, our cultures clash and all of a sudden, you know, you start to have violence and um, For many years the devil I mean you can blame other organizations like the Jesuits and the Freemasons and whatever else that do some scheming Sure, but uh, let's go to the real problem here the devil has been um you know, forcibly, forcibly mixing people together, a mixed up society, and uh, ultimately it's going to lead to war, which leads to the devil's very favorite thing, and that is death. Um, he likes to kill people. He likes to see people kill each other. And so, um, I mean, there's actually, if you want to get right down to it, there's actually no reference in Scripture that I'm aware of where Satan actually physically killed anyone. Um, and yet, uh, if he can get people to kill each other, that's his purpose. Um, man is created in the image of God, meaning man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. And so the devil hates man as a result of that. And he wants to send as many people to hell as possible. And that's what this whole system is about. So you have people on the right uh, currently right now that are sick and tired of all the crime and sick and tired of all the hypocrisy and You have to say something you can't just say uh, You know well, I'm okay with um, Old women being carjacked and I forget what else they said in the song You know spitting in police officers faces and burning American flags and whatever um, You know we have to be okay with that because people have freedom to do that uh, freedom does not include treason. Okay, you can't just, I mean, if you, if you imagine a boat, let me say it this way, and there's a boat and, and you get a bunch of people on it, say a cruise ship or something like that. Um, well, you have freedom to do, to do whatever you want. No, actually you don't. You don't have freedom to go down to the engine room and start to tamper with the motor of the boat and the mechanics of the boat. You don't have freedom to start drilling holes in the hull of the ship. To make it sink if you have somebody that comes onto the boat that wants to sink the boat um, you don't just say well we have to stand back and just let them do it because otherwise we'd be you know persecuting them uh, no you don't do that and um, so and this brings up another interesting thing here and that is um, how does a Christian how does a Christian vote 
uh, because I get this one and I've had people say this in the comments and it's a it's a good argument they say well Brian I don't understand you're telling us that we need to stand against the left and yet stand against the right but the right says some good things which we should stand for but yet the left is there you know what do we do well it's very challenging um, as a Christian you have to stand for truth um, that's the most important thing uh, and you know usually your conservative groups like the Republicans or whatever they will say the right things now saying and doing are two different things of course we know that so the Republicans will come out and they'll say um, you know we're against abortion well that's good that's the stand of a Christian a Bible believing Christian realizes that in Jeremiah chapter 1 God says about Jeremiah that you know that he knew him before he formed him in the womb um, and ordained him a prophet uh, not quoting exactly there but that's what the verse talks about that God actually knew Jeremiah in the womb you know and even before he formed him so obviously logically God would know uh, every child he would form every child and create them he is our creator so how could you make an argument that, that is uh, the child's not really um, they're not really a person yet and you can just kill them because they're a fetus you can't make that argument from the scriptures there's no justification for uh, abortion in the Bible um, well then what do you do well, as a Christian, you have to stand against abortion. Well, the Republicans stand against abortion, usually. Okay, but uh, what do they really do to stop it? See, well, they, the Supreme Court, they passed this thing, they overthrew uh, Roe versus Wade. Well, okay, but uh, it didn't stop abortion. So, you see what I'm saying? What they say and what they do are two different things. And, of course, if you understand politics, you understand that at the top, they're all working together. It's all... They're just uh, front men or women for uh, big corporations. They're bought and paid for, in other words. So uh, Big Pharma is one of the big contributors to politics here in America. So Big Pharma wants to experiment on the American people and, and uh, try out their pills and their you know, shots and all their other stuff. And so they have a lot of sway in the political arena. Again, you have to remember that. You get up into the levels of the national level and things, you know, uh, in terms of congressmen, senators, presidents especially, uh, you're bought and paid for. And so to get into their speeches and to say, oh, this guy's promising this and this guy's promising that, yeah, they always do. But they don't often follow through with it. You say, but we should go with the lesser of two evils. And they, yeah, yeah, you know, and... Uh, one of the recent videos I did, I was talking about, you know, being patriotic, and some of you brought up the point, well, you can't be patriotic with the government in terms of defending what the government does because the government's just completely corrupt. I mean, there's so many corrupt politicians, and they've just been in there, you know, for years, <laughs> you know, multiple decades of time that they've been in politics, and they don't leave. You get John Scary Carey, you know, and uh, guys like that and, and things just get caught lying and, and whatever. And they, I saw him questioned recently on the issue of uh, private jets or something. You know, he's condemning uh, all this, you know, you're using too much oil and whatever else. And yet he himself, you know, they asked him about his private jet and he said, no, I don't fly on private jets. And they said, well, does your wife, or do you own one? Well, my wife owns one. Have you ever flown on it? Well, yes. <laughs> Okay, but, uh, you know, don't defend the politicians. Defend the law that we're supposed to have, the Constitution. Um, that's what we're supposed to defend, a just system of law that protects our rights as Christians. That's what we should defend. So, um, rambling on here, but... Uh, um, understand again what this whole thing is about this uh, try that in a small town uh, again what it, what did i say earlier god sets bounds of our habitation we're supposed to have different boundaries so there's some truth to the song the song says try that in a small town all right 
uh, see how far you make it down the road or whatever you know the thing goes um, you're not going to be able to do a lot of the burning of things and you know all the rioting and smashing cars and whatever else you can't do that in a small town um, yeah because there's more conservative people in the small towns so again um, if this violence from the city ever spills out into the small towns it's going to be bad it will lead to civil war and you know you can look at the map of conservative versus liberal areas in america and america is almost completely red when you get right down to it it's and it's university studies coming out you know with this whole thing um civil war in this country is going to eliminate a lot of people that are very left-leaning and again you say well then so we should stand with the right and the republicans and the red the red army against the blue army um you have to stand for the truth that's the tricky part here because as a christian there are movements both movements ultimately want to destroy christians because both movements if they're not of god if they're not you know um uh in line with scripture i'll say it that way then they're going to be used of the devil and you can see that um, both movements do things that are contrary to the bible contrary to scripture um, so you're forced into this thing of do you go with uh you know profane uh wicked bible rejecting conservatives or profane wicked bible rejecting liberals um, well you don't go with either one but if you stand for a certain truth and the right stands for the same thing, well, okay. You just pray about it and say, Lord, you know, if this right wing thing comes to power, um, uh, help me to survive in that. Help me to be able to, you know, use me to reach the right people. That should be our prayer. Um, and again, you know, I stand against the alt-right Catholic system because historically they have been a very major persecutor of bible believing christians they call us heretics we aren't in line with the catholic church and therefore you know we need to be um burned at the stake and tortured and whatever else which historically has happened um and catholics like to always say well yeah but the protestants they did they've also killed catholics and things uh you look at the numbers of protestants that fought back against the catholics and killed some Catholics compared to Catholic persecution of Bible believing people, it's not even close to being the same. And, um, you know, there were great men of God like Oliver Cromwell that rose up and fought against Roman Catholics. And it was a war type of a situation, not just going out and hunting down Catholics for the sake of hunting down Catholics, uh, like the Roman Catholics have done. So, to the Protestants, I'm saying. Um, but the whole point is here, uh, would we be better off, I'll say it this way, would we be better off under a left um, communistic, atheistic uh, system, or would we be better off under a Roman Catholic alt-right system? <laughs> well, if you want my honest opinion, I would say the alt-right Roman Catholic system, because at least they talk about Jesus. At least they're, some Catholics are a little bit more open-minded. They're not all radical frothing at the mouth um you know spanish inquisition types um but those types are there so um we right now brethren we are in the uh last time i can't say years or whatever i think it's probably years but i could be wrong but we are in the last days of um the body of Christ, the time of the body of Christ. I can't really say the church age because church just means called out assembly. Um, typically, we think of the church of Jesus Christ, which is fine. But uh, we are in those last days. Um, things are winding down. All right. And uh, so you have to keep that in mind. Um, we have to do what we can and pray about what we can in terms of, okay, Lord. I can see this system coming. Um, the alt-right patriotic system that's coming 
would be good for us in many ways as Christians, a lot better than these, this liberal left stuff, because the liberal left right now, they want to pass laws that, you know, it's a, it should be illegal. I saw a statistic yesterday, something about 44% um, of millennials think it should be a criminal charge if somebody misgenders someone. <laughs> what? I, I can't even fathom that. Misgender somebody. How do you even, you know, it's just satanic is what it is. It's just uh, denial of the Bible is all that that is. Um, misgendering somebody. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, but see, the left wants to make rules that would obviously be very bad for Bible-believing Christians. So it's not, well, you know, we have to worry about Roman Catholicism taking over and uh, defend the left or something. No. Um, and if you're on the left, by the way, if you're a leftist, you have to understand where this whole thing's going. The alt-right will take over. It's prophesied in Scripture, and it's also part of the whole system. The guys that are behind the scenes and the whatever else, they're doing this whole thing. They're promoting this divide-and-conquer strategy because the right will come to power, uh, just like Nazi Germany. Um, it's going to happen here in America. Uh, the, the huge amount of conservative red Republican types, it just, it's huge compared to the, the liberal left. So the alt-right will come to power, so be careful how much you push against the right because if you're a nutty leftist, you are going to be exterminated in the future. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot more I could say on this subject, but I just wanted to put this thing out and uh, just give my opinion on the whole thing. Um, there are very real emotions, there are very real things involved with this whole issue. Um, anybody who's conservative, I don't care what color you are, what race you are, whatever, um, ethnicity, kindred people, tongue, and nation, um, I don't care what you are. Um, there are differences between us, and we should be celebrating those differences and not, not allowing those differences to uh, be used to incite anger and hatred and uh, ultimately death because there will be a lot of, of innocent people that get killed. Um, you know, a lot of the blacks in America, the reason that they're committing violence against white people is because they've been incited to that. A lot of the um, people that are involved in sodomy, sorry about that, a lot of the people that are involved in sodomy, they've been incited to it. They've been uh, drawn into that movement. Um, they've been propagandized by Hollywood into thinking that uh, because they can't get a date, they must be a, you know, sodomite or something. That's not true. Um, so, uh, stand for what's right. If you can get one thing out of this video, that's the thing to get out of this video. Stand for what is right, uh, no matter what. Uh, if the left takes a good stand on something that's in line with Scripture, which they don't often do, but if they do, then you stand for that. Not align with the left, but you just say, well, I could agree with you on that. But the Bible teaches this. The Bible teaches that. That's the standard for a Christian, the Bible. Not, uh, well, the Republican Party told me to say this or say that. That's not the standard. All right. So um, there's going to be a real big up upheaval for the rest of this year. I believe that. Um, we're right on the brink of World War III. Um, it's funny, you know, all the, the, uh, one of the big things that the left likes to say about the right is that the right's filled with war-mongering, toxic white men or something. Kind of funny because they're, uh, doing lots of war right now with this whole war in Ukraine thing that happened under the Biden administration. There's, uh, many hundreds of thousands of people have died from the reports I'm hearing. And, um, it's been a very horrible, bloody conflict over there. And it happened with the left in power. So, the left can kill just as good as the right. Um, don't ever forget that. But uh, 2024 election, selection, <laughs> they'll put in whoever they want. Um, because again, you know, America, the government here is controlled. Please don't mistake what I was trying to say in my one video about being patriotic. You know, that I'm 
for the political process. I'm not. Uh, obviously, I'm not. But uh, um, just do what's right, brethren. Just stand for truth. Uh, if the right takes a good stand, then say, well, I agree with the right on this, but they're wrong on whatever else. And uh, But I think it's going to really be a major time of dividing this nation. And I do think that we're going to be seeing war very soon. Um, and uh, war, by the way, can be a very good thing. Uh, also, don't forget that. Uh, it's a judgment on sin. People start to wake up to the fact that, hey, uh, I could die, and where, I wonder what happens to me after I die. So uh, let's not make the mistake, too, of saying, oh, we have to fight war. We can't let war come. War would be a bad thing. War would be a very good thing for this country. It's needed. Um, you know, people need to start thinking about their nation and get serious about political issues and things like that. Real political issues. Real national patriotism. Again, please understand what I'm saying there. Not just, you know, total to the Republican Party or to the left or whatever. No. People really need to get concerned about what are our rights and whatever else. And if we just say, oh, it doesn't matter, rapture is going to happen, um, the, the devil will slip in and he's going to make some bad things happen and we could see some real horrible persecution before the catching up of the body of Christ. Um, our job is to hinder. He that he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's the body of Christ. Oh, no, it's actually the Antichrist. No, it isn't. The body of Christ is supposed to hinder the Antichrist system. We're supposed to be there to slow it down and to try to warn people and try to get those last few people saved before we are leaving. That's what our job is supposed to be. That's the main thing there. And so doing that, you have to be able to say, okay, I need a political environment where I can carry out uh, my job as a Christian and still have peace and still have freedom. So if you see the left rising in power and saying we need to take away people's rights, you know, and we need to say that you can't misgender someone or you have to be okay with perversion or whatever, we, f we need to fight against that. We see the alt-right coming out and saying um, we can't have any anti-Catholic bias. Oh, mm, no, we need to fight against that. Um, there was all this stuff about the FBI coming out against Roman Catholics, naming certain Roman Catholics. And uh, there's congressmen and senators, you know, questioning the head of the FBI. Guy sent me a video and, and this one papist that was trained by Jesuits. I think he went to a Jesuit high school. And he's, you know, do you have an anti-Catholic bias here in the FBI? Oh, no, we don't. Well, you know, whatever else. See, they're playing that stuff up to get the Catholics incited and ready for the big civil war that's about to happen. And we have to stand against it. See what I'm saying? Stand for truth and stand against wickedness, no matter which side it comes from. Um, we have to make sure that we do that because we have to preserve some level of freedom here in America. Uh, and another thing that you can do with that is, um, you know, well, I'll leave that for another video. But um, just wanted to make a little short video here. Short videos usually turn out to be about a half hour long. <laughs> Um, I'm a preacher, what can I say? But uh, I'm going to be coming out with a study, um, a big study here I've worked on, and um, so have a lot of things going right now, and so I haven't been able to get to the study, but Lord willing, I'll be recording it today. I have a bunch of errands I need to run, but hopefully I can get that done. So I uh, look forward to seeing everybody's comments. Um, and uh, so... You know, with the YouTube thing here, you know, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button and all that other stuff so that YouTube doesn't just completely bury my video. I would appreciate that. Uh, you liking and subscribing, I'm saying. Um, so, that is going to be it. And uh, please do keep us in your prayers. And we'll see you in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.